I can't tell the world how to deal with losing a, a child. It's a process that we have to figure out for our own self. He was a human being. He was loved by his family. He's loved by the community. He's loved by all, as, as you can see. Just basically just having people just remember him in that sight, you know. I took my pain into a purpose. I took my anger into a purpose. Uh, best believe I'm still angry. It's just that I use it in a different fashion. Justice for you and me. Justice for my Brown. No justice. No peace. No justice. No peace. There's about three or four of us, and we stood in the middle just to kind of help calm things because all we, all we knew is that with that crowd approaching the police department and the officers barricaded, didn't know what would happen, but we knew it wouldn't be, wouldn't be good if they got to that, that line. That night, when the vigil occurred on West Florissant, and then the quick trip burned, I mean, I was laying in bed with my wife just watching the news and watching watch that unfold. I was, I was stunned, I was surprised. I knew somehow at some point something changed, you know, at that point that this was not something that was just going to uh, subside until more facts were uncovered, that there was going to be continued pressure. It was decades of abuse, systemic abuse, um, racism that has existed a long time, hundreds of years in Missouri. You know, when they showed up and they're being met with, you know, shotgun rifles, you know, like people had like long arm weapons. Um, there were German shepherds there, you know, which weren't necessarily, you know, being calm. But I just think that the big presence of like heavy artillery, you know, and that kind of response really upset people. If Michael Brown didn't die, nothing that's going on now that's after, that happened after Michael Brown would, wouldn't be there. Uh, we went to Canfield and there's a lot of, lot of stuff going on there. Like, his blood was still on the ground. When he died, he started the movement. He started something great that's going on in the nation now. No justice! No peace! No justice! No peace! Nationwide, and certainly in St. Louis, we have taken a real look at how we address the beginnings of anything and focused on de-escalation focus on having those relationships ahead of time in the community so that the response isn't a police line, if not necessary. There hasn't been much change, you know. There are things that have been mandated by the agreement with the federal government from the consent decree that they had to do, but it's by default, you know. I don't think the, the hearts of the people have necessarily changed because they didn't acknowledge initially that there was a problem in the first place. Michael's legacy is through me. I am his legacy. Me standing in the public, trying to do the right thing, keeping the work going. We share the same name, we have the same blood. He has no voice, I have the voice for him, so I have to keep pushing him in, in the direction he needs to be.